So we're gonna be taking a look at how I set Lightroom up to get the best possible performance from the app. And I'm also gonna be taking a look at the hardware side of things, how the computer and how the hard drives are set up can make a massive difference to the performance of Lightroom. And at the end of the video, I'll also give you some tips about how you can opt out of Adobe's AI training. Now, in terms of my editing setup, it's not that exciting, I'm afraid. It's based around an M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a BenQ 4K monitor. I replaced my old Mac keyboard with a Logitech MX Keys Mini, which is really nice. And if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I really like to use gaming mice instead of tablets and that kind of thing. So at the moment, I'm using a Logitech G403 gaming mouse. I also have an Elgato Stream Deck, which I mainly use for Photoshop, but I do use it for some things in Lightroom, which I'll talk about later. So the first port of call when it comes to getting Lightroom working smoothly is to put your catalog somewhere where the computer can read and write to it very quickly. And in most cases, that will be the main internal boot drive of the computer, and that's where Lightroom will put it by default. Now, having spoken to a lot of photographers, one of the problems that can happen is if you've got a, a smallish hard drive, that hard drive can get filled up very quickly and everything will start to slow down. So what most people do is they tend to say, oh, I don't know what I'll do, I'll take that catalog and I'll put it on another drive so I can free up the main drive on my computer. But the trouble is if you put it on a slow drive, then those read write times can affect the performance of Lightroom. So I'm gonna give you some examples of this. I've got three drives connected to my setup here and I'm gonna show you the read write times of each of those drives. So here's the baseline. This is my Mac's internal drive read write speed. As you can see, it's pretty fast. Now this is one of the most common types of drive that people have. It's a large mechanical USB-C drive. And as you can see in terms of performance, it's absolutely shocking. So if you move your catalog to this drive, which a lot of photographers do, you are bound to get a huge drop in performance. So next up, we have a typical USB-C SSD drive, which has been recommended by a lot of people on a lot of forums as an alternative to the Mac's hard drive. But as you can see, the performance here is better than the mechanical drive, but it's still really dire compared to the internal drive. So here is my, what I like to call my Lightroom drive. This is where I store all of my catalogs. And as you can see, it's almost as fast as my Mac's internal drive. So what's going on? You know, what am I using? Is it witchcraft? Is it, what is it? It's basically a cheap Thunderbolt 4 enclosure with a Samsung SSD drive plugged into it. And you can get these from Amazon and I'll leave a link in the description below to these and all the other bits and pieces I'll be talking about today. Now this drive plugs directly into my computer via Thunderbolt 4. Now all my other drives go through a CalDigit Thunderbolt 4 hub. And while it's very reliable, there is a slight drop in performance. So being on a Mac mini, I have the ports available on the back of my computer. So I will plug my Lightroom drive directly into the computer for optimum performance. Now the other thing that I get asked is, does the size of the catalog matter to performance? Well, in the early days of Lightroom, yes, it did. You know, we always tried to keep the catalogs as trim as possible because the bigger the catalog got, the slower Lightroom became. But these days, there's been so many advances in terms of operating systems and how Lightroom works and so on that I don't think it really matters. I've got catalogs of various sizes and I can't see any difference in terms of performance between any of them. Now, what I personally like to do is base my catalogs on the contents of individual hard drives. For example, I have a hard drive which contains all the images from 2015 to 2022. So I have a corresponding catalog which contains only those images. Now, once a hard drive reaches 75% capacity, I bring a new hard drive in and start a new catalog for that drive. It just makes troubleshooting easier than having a catalog which spans several hard drives. It's a little bit easier to manage. Now I keep all my original images on large mechanical external USB-C drives, the slow ones that we looked at earlier on. I use these because they are a lot cheaper in terms of cost per gigabyte than SSD drives. And once Lightroom has imported and created previews from that drive, 
There isn't really a big difference in performance between having the images stored on SSD or having them stored on mechanical drives. Each drive will have its own backup drive, so there'll always be a pair of drives. So when I'm importing images into Lightroom, I always copy those images to the two drives. So I've immediately got a backup of all the images that are coming into the software. And the other thing I do as well is I always create standard previews on import. If you have an older machine, things are a little bit sluggish, particularly in develop mode. I would probably create one-to-one -one previews on import. It takes a little bit more time in order to bring the photographs into Lightroom, but it makes everything a lot smoother once you're in the app itself. Now, when I finished a photograph and I finished editing it, all the images are saved as TIFF files, and these TIFF files are put on a network drive. So the important images are basically stored in three different places. And this is way more than we used to have when we were dealing with film. Now within Lightroom, there are a few things we need to make sure we've switched off. So go to preferences, then the performance tab go to camera raw cache settings make sure the location of your cache file is on your fastest drive i keep mine on the thunderbolt external drive my lightroom drive if you like and lightroom will put it on your main internal hard drive by default now there is some question over whether you should keep the cache on the same drive as your catalog or on your main computer drive with the lightroom app i've done both and i've honestly can see no difference in performance but by far the most important thing is to change the cache setting to give it some room to breathe I think the default is five gigabytes, but I set mine to hundred gigabytes because I have the space. Honestly, it's probably not necessary to have this much. And I've seen Adobe recommend 20 gigabytes for most people, but I've also not seen a definitive figure on this either. But this has always worked for me. So I've left it at hundred gigabytes. And if anybody has a definitive figure or how you get to a definitive figure, can you let me know in the comments? I'd be really interested to know. Okay. From there, we need to go to catalog settings. Go to file handling and make sure your preview size matches your monitor. If you kind of get blocks appearing around your brushes when you're using them or everything seems a bit sluggish, like you'll move your brush across the screen and then, you know, it might just catch up a little bit, which I've experienced. Drop the preview quality down to medium and it should go away. You should get better performance. And if you're using an external display, make sure that the monitor is set to the default resolution. I personally noticed quite a performance drop when I got my 4K monitor, if I used a resolution other than what Apple recommend as default. Now, finally, go to metadata and make sure all of this stuff is unchecked, especially the automatically write changes to XMP. Now, just a couple of tips while we're in Lightroom, which won't affect performance as such, but can speed up how you use Lightroom. If you have a mouse with programmable buttons on it, I would highly recommend that you program the brush command to one of those buttons. I've got mine set so that when I click the center wheel, the brush comes up on the screen and I can adjust the size of the brush on the fly with the scroll wheel. I have one of the other buttons set to the shift key. So if I press that at the same time as using the scroll wheel, I can change the size of the feather of the brush. So it's really easy and really handy to be able to do that without going to the keyboard or looking at sliders on the screen. Now I mentioned Stream Deck. If you have a Stream Deck, you can program the buttons to do different things. Now mine is set up with my most used commands within Lightroom. It's a bit of a luxury and honestly, it's not really that necessary, but I use Stream Deck all the time in Photoshop, particularly for actions. So I have it anyway. So if you've got one, you know, go for it. Now I've also spent some time recently customizing the develop module panels. I've removed the panels I never use and I always use solo mode where only one panel appears at a time. I used to like all the panels open, but when you use the mass panel now, it can become a bit of a mess visually. And often I would find myself accidentally adjusting the basic settings rather than the mass settings. You can also use solo mode in masks now. And, and of course I do that. Now, if you've been living under a rock for the last week, you probably won't have heard all the hoo-ha around Adobe and all the hate directly towards Adobe. This is because they changed their terms and conditions. AI is going to be inevitable for any imaging company that produces software in order to train their AI engines and to apply those adjustments, which have to be done, I believe, via the cloud. There has to be an agreement in place with the end user. Adobe, for me, just got that bit wrong and they didn't communicate it very well. But for me personally, I'd be much more concerned about what 
Meta has in store for your images, especially those uploaded to Instagram and Facebook. But if you want to avoid Adobe using your images to train its AI, just go to your Adobe account, go into data and privacy settings, and then switch these two sections off, desktop app usage and content analysis. Then go into Photoshop if you have Photoshop, click on settings, go to product improvement and make sure this box is unchecked. Thanks for watching, I hope that all helps. If you got some value out of this video, we'd love to see you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.